So I've recently discovered the power of shortcuts and automations on both iOS and iPadOS 16 to really kind of make my life a lot easier. And I can't believe it took me this long to really dive into it because it is a little bit intimidating because shortcuts is kind of like a more user-friendly way of coding stuff for lack of a better term because it's basically a lot of formulas of if this then that situations which honestly it's not that hard once you really dive into it and you can get some really simple automations done which i'm going to show you in this video which are very productive to kind of help your day-to-day -day use of an iphone and then also your environment in general so in this video i'm going to talk about seven must know shortcuts slash automations for ios ipad os and even mac os honestly but let's get right into the video and let me know in the comments down below we're going to do a new format real quick and i want to know what you guys think about this new format or if you like the more of in real life situations but let's get into it Okay, so let's get right into this video, everybody. Hopefully you enjoy this new layout of how I'm gonna show you guys exactly what to do from a shortcut standpoint. I just kinda wanna give you guys a cleaner look so you guys can see exactly what's going on. So the first one we're gonna talk about has to do with battery and low power mode. So if you go into your shortcuts menu, go into automations, you guys are probably aware that you go into low power mode or at least iOS asks you if you wanna go into low power mode when you get to about 20% battery. With automations and shortcuts, you can actually change that to make it whatever you want to save even more battery. So if you go into create personal automation, you go and scroll down to battery level, and then you go into this little scroll bar or this little bar right here to let you decide what percentage you want your battery to be at. So let's say if I go and I have it to 80%, if it falls below 80%, I press next. I wanna add an action, type in battery, set low power mode, next, and then I'm pretty much ready to go. The only thing that you have to decide on, and this is gonna be the same thing for every single shortcut and automation, which is do you want iOS to ask you before running this? I'm gonna turn this off and say, no, don't ask. And then also then another option comes up called notify when run. I'm also gonna leave that turned off. So I'm gonna press done on here. So when it falls below 80% battery, then it will go into low power mode automatically without even asking you to help you save a little bit of battery. So another great automation that I found out about recently is being able to send automated messages to somebody depending on your location. So this is gonna be the same process, but we're gonna change it up a little bit. So go back into your automations, go and set personal automation, then scroll down to where it says arrive, then you're gonna choose your location. So let's say I wanna put in New York City. So every time I arrive into New York, right? And you can set what radius you want. So it can be as simple as like right in the middle or make it as big as possible. And then you can see what I like about this is that with the map itself, the more radius you choose, the farther out it goes. So if I wanna do all of Soho, all of South Manhattan, I can do that, I press done. So then what you do from here is you press send message and then from here you decide what you want the message to be and then who you wanna send it to. So if I wanna put here arrived in NYC and let's say I send it to my wife, press done, press next. So then whenever I arrive to New York City, so let's say you're taking a flight to New York City or you have a bunch of friends that live in New York, whenever you arrive in New York City, whether it's by plane, train or by foot, a message will be automatically sent to them saying that you have arrived with whatever message that you want to send. I think this is great to notify people, especially loved ones and close ones and relatives if you've arrived in their location to let you know like, hey, hit me up because I'm in town. So the next one has to do with focus modes and focus modes by default. So if you go into your focus mode settings, go into focus, you can actually turn focus modes on automatically from the focus menu depending on the time of day. But if you wanna get a little bit more granular and more nuanced, which I think is great, especially for people that actually go commute still and they don't work from home. So you go back into your shortcuts. So let's go into create personal automation. We're gonna go back into the same arrive option. We're gonna choose a location. I'm gonna do this location right here, press done, cause that's supposedly the office or something like that. We'll press next. So then from here, you're gonna actually tap on the add action, type in focus on the search bar up here, scroll down to where it says set focus. And then from here, you can choose which focus mode you want. So I'm gonna turn on my work one. I'm gonna make sure it's turned on until it's turned off. So we press next and press done. And then the same thing can be done if you wanna reverse, which I'll show you guys in a little bit with a different automation, but you can actually set it to whenever you leave to turn focus mode into personal, to turn off the focus mode entirely. So this is the only way currently that you can change focus modes based on location. So I think this is absolutely optimal and ideal for somebody that's commuting to work and wants to have zero distractions the moment they walk into the door or whatever their office space is. This next one is actually great. And the reason I like this one so much is because especially if you have something like a HomePod, right? Or something that's Apple related, but you don't use Apple Music. You use something like Spotify or Audio Mac or SoundCloud. And those are your main forms of music, right? So what I like to do is set an automation whenever I connect to a certain Bluetooth speaker. So if I wanna create a personal automation to do this, you scroll down to where it says Bluetooth, 
you're going to choose the device that you want to happen. So for instance, if I want to connect, let's say to my brand new Action 3, which is my Marshall speaker, which I'm going to have a review on very, very soon. If you guys do want to check that out, we'll press done. We'll press next. And then you're going to press on this open app down here. So you're going to open which app? It's going to open Spotify. So I'll type in Spotify because that is my main music player of choice. We press next. So when the iPhone connects to Action 3, it opens Spotify, we'll press done, and it's a beautiful thing to have. So whatever I connect to the Action 3, Spotify will automatically open, no questions asked. So now let's get on to automation number five. We're kind of closing out on these seven automations, but the fifth one is actually a very important one, especially when it comes to driving, make sure you're not disturbed. Obviously we now have the focus modes, so you can set a driving focus mode if you would like to, but sometimes when you set the driving focus mode, maybe the people that are very important can't communicate to you or, it gets a little iffy sometimes depending on what you want to come in when you are driving. So one thing that I really like to do is whenever I get into the car, an automation that happens when I connect to CarPlay especially takes into place. So go back to create personal automation, click on where it says CarPlay, then when it connects, you press next. Then the next action I want to do is actually send a message to my wife. So I'll type in message saying, I just left in the car, recipients to my wife, press done, next. So here lets you review when CarPlay connects, send message, ask before running, I'm gonna press no on there, don't ask, press done. So now every single time that I connect my iPhone, so now every single time I connect to CarPlay, it'll text my wife saying, hey, I've left, or I'm in the car now, please don't text me essentially. And this can be done with multiple ways. So I know not every single car has CarPlay, so you can do the same action with Bluetooth. So let's say you're in a Tesla that doesn't support CarPlay really, and you do everything via Bluetooth, the same thing applies, just instead of CarPlay, you press Bluetooth, and whenever you connect to Bluetooth, let's say your Tesla, then it'll send that automated message. So it works pretty much any way that you want it to when you get into the car. And if I wanna double down on that, I can actually go down here and actually go into scripting and press open app, and let's say I want it to open Spotify again because that is my music player of choice. So whenever I actually jump into the car and connect to CarPlay, now it does two things. It opens Spotify, and it sends that text message out to let people know, hey, I'm in the car now. I love that automation, and it's used a lot. Okay, so this next one is big, especially if you are somebody that wants to save as much battery as possible. So as we all know, if you go into settings and you go into your Wi-Fi, the Wi-Fi is normally always toggled on. So when you're out and about and you're kind of in your car, or let's say you're walking around New York City, you're walking, walking around your town, it's gonna look for Wi-Fi at all times and that drains a lot of battery. So the best way to kind of combat this is, is to again, create a personal automation. So if I go into shortcuts, create personal automation, we're gonna use the same arrive feature. So if I go into location, I wanna choose my current location, which is home. We'll press done, we'll press next. And then from here, you wanna add the action. We're gonna type in Wi-Fi, set Wi-Fi to toggle on. So whenever I arrive home or whenever I am home, that Wi-Fi toggle will be turned on. So I'll press next and then we'll press done. And then the same thing applies. So if I wanna add another automation, so when I leave to save battery, and this is the big one. So whenever I leave, so we'll press the leave action, choose location, current location. So whenever I leave this vicinity, I'm gonna add the action where it goes to Wi-Fi. We're gonna set Wi-Fi off, press next, press done. So now every single time I leave my home, my Wi-Fi toggle will be turned off, which will save me battery in the long run because it's not gonna be searching for Wi-Fi routers wherever I am. So now we're down to the last one, and this is for the people that have home sensor automation. So if you have a home security system that works with HomeKit, I use one called Adobe, which has you know the camera, the, the door sensors, the window sensors, the flood sensors, and it works great with HomeKit. Depending on when this video goes out, we might have a video on that already, so definitely check that out. If not, I'll link it down below at some point. So what you wanna do is go back into your automation, press a plus button. We're gonna create a home automation this time because Obviously, if you use location-based automations, you can do this as well, but if you wanna be a little bit more precise, because you know, based on GPS and cellular data and Wi-Fi, sometimes the location isn't perfect, but if you want it perfect every single time, you rely on the sensors that are on the door itself. So here, you have a couple options. So you have you know, people when I arrive, people when they leave, time of day, an accessory. I'm gonna to go to the one that says sensor detects something. So I have a front door entrance sensor, we're gonna press next. So whenever that opens, I'm gonna make sure it's any time of day, I'm gonna press next. I'm gonna make it so my Hue Lamp 1 turns on, my Christmas tree light turns on, I'm gonna make sure my office light is turned on, my desk lamp LED is turned on, we're gonna press next, and then you can decide what situation you want it to be in, right? What colors, what intensity you want it to be in. I wanna make sure that this Christmas tree is turned on no matter what time of day it is, whenever I get home because it makes me feel good about the Christmas time, and then I can either test the automation or press done. So now every single time that sensor is hit or that sensor gets activated, so whenever the door opens, 
all of those things occur. But those are my seven must know automations and shortcuts. And I'm learning more and more about the shortcut ecosystem and it's very vast and amazing. And it's honestly a cheat code when it comes to using your phone correctly. But let's get out of this view and finish up the video. That is gonna do it for this video, everybody. Like you saw, we're just scratching the surface of these automations and shortcuts. These are very simple ones, maybe two or three step automations. You can get crazy with these automations, like 100, 200, 1000 step automations that happen kind of in the blink of an eye. And there's a lot of communities and threads that actually let you download shortcuts directly. Like I have a shortcut that will take a screenshot of my screen and actually put it inside of the iPhone form factor and give me that as an image in my photo library, which I think is awesome. And there's also other automations like being able to have a tipping calculator right there from your automations and so many more. But out of the ones that I showed you, my favorite ones are probably my two battery savers and then also my sensor ones. So the battery saving mode, which is being able to set low power mode in any percentage, and then also the battery saving mode when it comes to searching for Wi-Fi's randomly. And then lastly, like I said, being able to have an automation based on actual sensors when I arrive home to turn on everything inside of my house so it, it is a welcoming feeling. And also I'm not leaving the lights all turned on and wasting energy when I'm not at home. But that is gonna do it for this video. Every leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so I know you made it to the end. And also leave a comment down below of A, if any of these shortcuts are new to you or any of these automations are new to you. B, if you are in the shortcut and automation world or if you're kind of like too intimidated to start because it took me again, years and years. And I'm somebody that considers themselves an Apple sheep that knows a lot about Apple. It took me forever to get into the shortcuts game. And lastly, these some links or recommendations of some shortcuts that you use on your day to day, right? Whether it is these types of automations or whether it's others that involve smart home accessories. So those are the ones that are really, really awesome for me. But that's gonna do it everybody. If you guys wanna watch more Mac OS, iOS or iPad OS videos, click on one of these videos right here. But until next time, I'm Fernando. And I'm out of here. Peace.